this Pat Brisson comment as well. We should get into this because Brisson is a is a power agent and he represents uh, Pierre Luc Dubois. Pardon yeah. me. He also represents Crosby. Yes, he does. That's right. Yep. JT. And he's, he's there. You go. He's got a bunch of big stars and he represents Pierre Luc Dubois. And he was doing an interview in French and. He essentially said that Pierre-Luc Dubois, who's currently an RFA, so he used that as an opportunity to slide in some, I think, kind of public tampering, basically. Mm -hmm. He said, because he doesn't have a contract, I can say, you know, he'd, very, he'd be very fond of playing in Montreal. Like, that's basically it, right? Like, he's from Quebec. He'd be very fond of getting to Montreal. Um, that's the translation for the most part. If I'm in Winnipeg, there's a part of me that actually appreciates this because I think this guy is putting all of his cards on the table. Like, Dubois is telling you, I'm not staying. You know, like, it sucks if you're in Winnipeg. It sucks. I don't think it's going to help him from a PR standpoint if he goes back there and plays this year. That's not the town to do it in. They're very sensitive. And yet, if you're Chevel Dayoff and the Jets, if this guy's being that serious, to the point where an agent is saying this publicly, something that I don't really – remember hearing very often like he's under team control for i believe two more years no 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 mm -hmm. he's rfa yes he's R. you're right he's rfa but they can hold on to his rights as an rfa for right. two years so technically they can match anything like he can be in winnipeg for two more years if winnipeg says you're not going anywhere for two years i guess is the way i should phrase it for a, for his agent to come out and say this is man that's a new trend like that, I don't – like, you can you imagine it? John Tavares two years before his UFA said he really wants to end up in Toronto? Isn't How the this world what's would explode? Isn't this what's, ha what's happening with Soto, basically? Yeah, but he's not saying where he wants to play. Right. Like, he's just turning down a contract. He's not saying, yeah, he'd really like to be in New York in two years. He's just turning down a deal. Is it tampering if it's the agent? I don't think so. No, it's not. It's not, like, legitimately tampering, but it seems like a form of, like, <laughs> pu like publicly – rooting interest in Montreal, maybe a message to the Habs, although I would think, again, the Habs would be well aware of his intentions. You can, like, Pat Brisson would be on the phone with every GM in the league every day almost. Well, and their yeah. GM was quoted, I think he was asked about this, and he basically said, would we like a young, big center? Yes, we exactly. would. Yeah, and maybe it's a smart play by Brisson because what it's going to do is get the Montreal local media on the story yeah. and mm -hmm. the fans on the story. And almost will it into existence. You know, here's Pierre Luc Dubois, French Canadian, stud centerman, wants to come home. Go do your work. Well, look, I mean, he's already said, like, way before Papperson said what he said in French about wanting to play in Montreal, you know, Dubois already said he wants to test free agency, right? In other words, I'm not staying in Winnipeg a minute longer than I'm contractually obligated to stay in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not exactly a, like a, a massive story in some ways because you, you know you knew the guy wasn't long for the Canadian prairies. But but you're right, Hayes. Like it is it is a bit of a different level to just to, to hone in on one team and say that's where he wants to go. Right. And using the he's an RFA again doesn't really hold much water because the Habs aren't going to sign him through an offer sheet. Yeah, but and they could just wait, couldn't they? Who, the halves? Yeah, like, couldn't they yeah, just... Yeah, no, obviously. But uh, the my point is, like, Winnipeg owns him right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, even if... Unless as he doesn't an report. RFA, well, that's fine. Then he doesn't get paid, and there might be a part of Winnipeg that says, go ahead, man. Like, we, they haven't wronged him, as far as I know. No. No. It just... I'll you tell know, you what. It, it's a good recipe to get booed at home next year if you don't yes. have a very good year, right? Exactly. Like, it's it's a great recipe to run yourself out of Winnipeg as the most hated man in town, especially... I mean, he's coming off a really good year, but what if next year's not so good? That's good. The pressure's going to mount pretty quickly. Right. That's the thing. Like, from a PR standpoint, I don't know why he's doing this publicly, because it has already gone public that he's not... He wants to test free agency, so basically he's saying... You know, if you want, I guess, a two-year deal if I have to, then Trade beyond me. that, I'm out of here. And now this is a step further where it's, even though maybe we knew this anyway, now it's on public record. Mm. I'd like to get to Montreal. So, okay. Hayes, what would you do if you were Kevin Cheveldayoff? Would you say, I can't have this guy here. I have to trade him. No, I because I, it doesn't come off as a, it's not a trade demand. It's not even malcontent. It's just the makings of the CBA that... He got drafted to Columbus, so he had to be there. That was a trade demand by all accounts. Like, he wanted out. Winnipeg swooped in and grabbed him. 
but it was this is a scenario of he didn't pick Winnipeg, but okay, I'll keep playing for you, but I'm not attached to you. I don't get the impression like again, it's it's poisonous. Um yeah, it's getting it. there though. Yeah, it's getting, I don't know. It could be getting their mouth off like that. If it you could got be getting someone saying they want to play for another team, yeah, can you no, keep that guy? I don't know. Uh, this is the conundrum that you know pro sports is dealing with. Talk to the NBA about this. Um, yeah, KD. Yeah, and with where like Silver came out recently and said it's a problem. Like Adam Silver's yeah. realizing he's been handing way too much power to these players for a long time. And now they have no respect for the contract. They, they don't care about the contract. They, they can demand whatever they want. They can go wherever they want. And until someone stops them, why would the players stop acting that way? I don't even blame yeah. them, you know. Um, hey, it's only going to get worse, guys. Once that, that – that tw- the, the new TV deal, it's, they're going to strike, what, in 2025? Mm-hmm. It's good. Like a lot of people are looking at, like, they're making $50 million now. By the end of that deal, they'll be making $100 million. Right, exactly. And – like you look at the NHL where they haven't had to deal with that same issue where players have publicly asked to be out. Like this is as crazy as it gets. You know, I'm going to test free agency in two years. Well, he'd like to go to his hometown team. Like that's not crazy, no. you know, but in the NHL it is where like I look at, uh, at a scenario like Patrick Kane in Chicago. If that's the NBA, he has already demanded out on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, his agent, he sold his place in Chicago, and well, yeah. yet we're sitting here waiting. Like, what's Patrick Kane going to do? You know, it's it's a very different league. Um, and yet, I, I think there's a middle ground where the NBA is and where the NHL is. There's a middle ground that I think would be great for business for both leagues and I think for fans, ultimately.